Hi, I'm Iris Fritz, and I am with Dunwoody College of Technology, and I'm here to talk to you about circles, my favorite object. The nice thing about understanding circles is if you get this down at its most basic level, you will be able to apply it to not only things that are circular, but things that are cyclical. And I'll talk to you about that too later on. So first let's understand the basic parts of a circle. I am not going to talk to you like the regular math books that you read that torture you. We're going to skip over that. We're going to use some really simple language. And one of the things I want to teach you today is the important parts of the circle, something that you need to get into your language, your math language. I'm also going to teach you where pi came from today, which is a beautiful thing. I was a hat maker at one time, and I had no idea how to measure. And when I learned how to measure circles, my whole life changed. So hopefully you'll get a little more understanding in place. So if you look at a circle, in a book it will tell you that a circle is a set of points that are equidistant from the center. Well, let's just really keep it simple. You all know what a circle is. We've looked at circles, we've drawn circles, we've had fun with circles in our life. And there is a center point of the circle. And the longest distance through a circle is starting at the outer edge, going right directly through the center to the outer edge. And this has a name. It's called the diameter. In math, we use a small d to represent diameter. So again, diameter is the longest distance through a circle. And that means you always have to go through the center of the circle to the other side to represent diameter. Half of the diameter also has a name. And these are two things that I want us to be familiar with so we can have a better conversation. So half of the diameter, which would start at the center and go to the outer edge, is called the radius. And we use a small r to represent radius. So now that we've got our measurement in place and we can have a better dialogue, let's start to look closely at how we can define diameter in different ways. So looking at diameter, I want you to notice something. Isn't the diameter of the circle equal to a radius plus a radius? You have two radiuses here. So another way to talk about diameter is two times the radius. So two times the radius or two radiuses equals diameter. Also, if I'm looking out of, if you will, the window of radius, I also can see that the radius is just simply equal to the diameter cut in half. So half of the diameter. And another way to write that would be to say I have one half of the diameter. So either way will represent radius. Now with that in place, let me show you something that for me changed my life as a hat maker. Up until now, I used mixing bowls. I had the largest mixing bowl collection on the planet. And I used mixing bowls to help me with designing patterns for my hats that I made. And I realized once I got into a good math class that if I would have learned what I'm about to teach you, I could have made my life so much simpler with my measurements. So looking at our circle here and focusing in on diameter, and let me just erase this for a second. The ancient Greeks, who I love so much, because they were so clever, we literally used sticks and stones <laughs> and rope to do measurements and to start to do what we call analysis in this uh, day and age. And what they found was a really interesting relationship that came out of measuring walking around the circle. So before I even get into that, let me introduce you to another word in uh, our language. There, the distance, and I'll write it up here, the distance around the circle is called circumference. Circumference is like perimeter of a rectangle. Walking around a rectangle, we call that the distance, we call that distance perimeter. But walking around the circle, if you will, is called circumference. Circ 
right here means circle. And each of our objects that we look at in mathematics has their own speak, if you will. So they have a bit of their own language. So the distance, again, walking around the circle all the way around, again, is called circumference. And we use a capital C to represent circumference. Now let me show you where it came from. That's what's so cool. So as I set up for this, I'm just going to erase now that we know what we're talking about. Going across here, what the ancients did was they took a string, and they had a heck of a time, the ancients, and those ancient Greeks about, I don't know, 3,000 years ago, were trying to measure the distance, if you will, around the circle. And they had a bit of a, uh, they had a hard time with that until they simply took the diameter with a piece of string. And if you take a piece of string, the length of the diameter of the circle, and you roll it around the circle, they found out that the diameter went around once, and then they walked it around, and that diameter, the string, went around again. And then again, they walked it around, and it ran around three times, and they took the diameter string, and they found out that this little leftover portion always was about equal to 14 hundredths of the diameter. Notice, the diameter of a circle will roll around the circumference one, two, three point one four times. And this number, which they found was something that continued to carry on here, was a number constant with every circle. So you can measure the diameter of a circle with a piece of string and then take it and roll it around the circle and you will find that diameter will go around the circle three times and you'll always have a little leftover piece that would measure about 14 hundredths of that string. And this is where pi came from. And because the Greeks didn't have a nice, well-defined way, because as you know, pi is irrational and just keeps on going, the best way they defined it was giving it a Greek letter called pi. So this is where pi came from. So with that in place, let's figure out what circumference is. Circumference of a circle, excuse me, is equal to pi times the diameter. And that's how you solve for circumference. So if you know the diameter, multiply it by pi, and you will have the circumference of the circle. Now, sometimes we don't have the diameter to work with. Sometimes all that's given is radius. And if the radius is given, what do we know about the radius? The radius times 2 will always give me the diameter. So another way to look at circumference would be pi times 2 times the radius. 2 times the radius is another way to talk about the diameter. So again, another way to find circumference with the radius is take the radius, multiply it by 2, you have the diameter, and then all you have to do is multiply it by pi. In a math book, this formula is given another way. So let's just make sure we can read our math books. In a math book, you will see circumference given this way when dealing with the radius. 2 times pi times r. It means the same thing. But in math books, we've developed, if you will, the proper way to speak our math language. And so this would be considered good form. That's all. It means exactly the same thing as this. So think about it. 2 times 3 times 4 is the same thing as 4 times 2 times 3. All I did was I 
just change the positioning of my factors, things being multiplied, right? So it doesn't matter if it feels more comfortable to take on circumference and remember it this way, that's fine. Just know that if you're given the radius, all you have to do is multiply it by 2 and then times pi, and again you have circumference. Let's really secure our knowledge by putting a real life problem up on, on the board and work through it. Now I don't have a calculator, so I'm going to work through this by hand. I'm sure that you have a calculator nearby. But don't be so dependent on a calculator that you can't think. When we do this by hand, many times we use pi as about equal to 3.14 because it makes our math easier. So if you're looking at the problem, this problem is giving us radius. We know that the radius is equal to 5 feet because it tells me that. Okay? Or otherwise you'll have a word problem where it will state that. So draw a circle and let yourself know what the radius is. So I'm just taking away our diameter line. Okay? So the radius is indeed 5 feet. That we know. And we also know something about diameter right now. Because what is the diameter? The radius plus the radius, if you will, two times the radius gives us diameter, doesn't it? Don't forget that diameter is just, if you will, twice the radius. You have a radius plus a radius gives you diameter, okay? So now that we've got that in place, let's play our game. Now, Circum or, excuse me, diameter is indeed 2 times the 5 feet. So that was easy. Diameter is just 10 feet. And many times you just do that in your head. Okay? Now let's determine circumference. And because you have figured out what the diameter is, circumference is just pi times the 10 feet. If you're strictly using radius thinking, and later on you're going to see why sometimes we strictly focus on what we call later radian thinking, if you will, a radian measure. I'll talk to you about that later in another video. But here, another way to play this out is make sure that you take pi times 2 times, of course, the 5 feet. Or in a book, I showed you what the book formula looks like. They put the 2 here, then the pi, and then the 5 feet. Whatever. It all comes out to being what? Circumference is equal to. Well, 2 times 5 is 10 feet. Pi, I said we're going to use 3.14 for pi. And then times, of course, are 10 feet. And that will give us circumference, which is the distance walking around this circle. And 10 times 3.14 gives you 31.4 feet. And that is the distance around the circle that we're looking at. Now the next video that I want you to uh, watch with me is area. And I'm going to do a proof for where the ancients took a circle, cut it up, and made it into a square, and then used length times width to figure out area. So I look forward to you joining me on the next video.